realize things are always coming up. Whether people need spiritual help or physical help or they need light or they need medical, whatsoever. But you always want to be in a position that you can what? Respond. You see, love will naturally move you to be the best you can be in, to be in the best position that you always can help your fellow man and to give God that honor. Nobody needs to like, force you. The natural, you. Remember what we read in um, 2 Corinthians 5, uh, 40. Love does what? It controls. And it urges you. And impel. You'll find naturally you might be sitting down and you're feeling it. I need to get this. I need to go gather this thing. I need to go do this work. It just urges you to do the necessary thing to be in what? The position. One of the work the Lord has been doing in myself and my family, especially me and my wife, for some time. We're always preparing. But not just for us. One of the things I love to be, when what, and the one thing you can take, the, the occasion, the, the occasions are always coming up. But I love being in a position I can respond to what? The occasion. Look, what makes you do this? What makes you just don't want to lie on your lease and enjoy yourself? It is love that must control you and urge you. When I have a chance sometimes, there's nothing wrong with having a nice thing and doing certain things. But it's something wrong if you're giving up the position to just enjoy your life. When you're giving up the position to be in a strong position to respond to the need that will come up. And you're just having shoes upon shoes and clothes and houses and cars. There's nothing wrong with having some. But it's something wrong when you don't sacrifice some of that for the love of others and the honor of God. Can you understand this process? If you are in a position that you can honor God and you can help people, you can have as much as you want if you care, if you want to be a Solomon. But it's wrong to sacrifice. This is why Paul says some things are excellent and good and profitable. The position of excellency to serve for your own good. You should have what you need, but you shouldn't have excess when you're not in a position. The position of the office is very crucial to be able to meet the demand. When verse 14, Paul tells Titus, make sure our people really understand this. They must be vague on this concept. They must really understand. Verse 15, when I said, all who are with me wish, amen, to be remembered to you. Greet those who love, uh, greet those who love us in, in faith. Grace, God's favor, and blessing be with you all. Amen. It is a wonderful, when you get some time, go back and read chapter 2 and 3. It is a wonderful pattern and expectation of where church should operate. The church must be sound in faith, sound in love. They must endure the process that this will come to maturity, that every aspect of their being and their living is for the honor of God and the benefit of mankind. Not wasting their time. You'll find when this happens, time becomes very important. Time becomes very crucial that you're trying consistently. And, and again, if, if you operate, if you keep asking the Lord, why well, don't pray, you should pray for simple, this one. Okay? It has to begin here. I pray this prayer for a very, very long time. I don't do it as much because I don't find I, get, I am affected negatively that way. I used to pray this for a long time. Father, Help me to love you the way you love Jesus and Jesus love you. And what I'm trying to pray is, is 2 Corinthians 5.14. I want love to control me. I want life, love to start motivating me or urging me or impelling me. When something, think of another word of impel, something propelling you, throwing you forward. You understand? Like pushing you. So you, you can use your will, but you might find yourself just like Paul in Romans 7. The things I know I should be doing or I want to do, I don't do, and things I shouldn't be doing, I'm doing because you're dependent on you. But you want grace to do it. Remember what we read in 2 and in uh, Second Titus chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. The Bible said, grace has come down to deliver me from sin and to give me power to reject certain things. I want grace to, to, to uh, propel me and urge me and comfort. I want God's help. I want God's love to motivate me. We see John 3, 60, God so love, God act. Another word to say, so love, so love always demands what? It always makes you take what? Action. We like to fight with ourselves. You know, I'm going to use my will and I'm going to, you get, you might get away with it one time, two times. But you'll find the war of the flesh and the momentum of the world, typically what? I'll do you. It'll overpower you after a while. But if, if, if the passion of love is there, and trust me, to get through the final stage, which is endurance, you will need love. I need something that, if, you know, see some people, 
Man, they have lost so much match. You go, why would you quit when they can't stop? They so love it. They so for their passion. Love doesn't allow you to give up. It will keep you going forward, keep you trying to overcome the situation or the circumstance again and again. Again and again. One of the areas, as I said, to mature in the church, we have to become good at enduring. And I, I want to share with you why you're going to need to become very good at enduring certain things. <coughs> everything has a principle. The Bible says, after God has built everything, we know the seven day, He rests. He got everything now of its pattern, it has its order, it has its sequence. That he can rest. If things didn't have the sequence or his pattern, or he can't, he got things that are still in a state of confusion or don't know what it's supposed to do. But when everything is clear on what it's supposed to do and how it's supposed to do, and there's a governing law or principle there, you can rest because there's a system, even how to run it, and it has a track or a pattern. So God was able to rest and let everything happen. Then he, that's why Ian, Ian, Ian man does have issue. Anytime man tries to change the pattern or the principle, they and God does have issue. In the process of coming to mature love or mature faith or to let them um, come to their full, or as I say, you come into its full range or become sound that the scriptures say in it, you're going to need to learn its principle. You're going to need to learn the principles of love and the principles of faith and the principle of endurance. Each one have its own unique principle. There are many. Only God knows them all. But there are some of them you really need to know. I like to think of the whole process as a cycle. There's a cycle you have to go through, and this is where endurance is very, very important. Everything God do, and because remember what I said, Kratos, we are co-creators too. There are some moments, amen, we're not building necessarily a world like God, amen, but there are certain things in your life based on where he's taking you, you will need to create. You're going to absolutely need faith because when you get there, it's not there. And God will go, let's build it, let's create it, let's build the bridge, let's build the church, let's build the ministry, whatsoever. But to be a good builder, Paul said this, Paul said, amen, God has made me, he said, an expert builder. He said, I build, and another man may water it. You're going to need to become expert in the areas that you need to build and run and manage. To do that, you're going to need to learn cycles. They are principle related, amen, to how you begin a thing. Whether it's a life, whether it's a marriage, whether it's a business, whether it's a church, there are principles you will need to learn, and this is where steadfastness or endurance is necessary. Now, all these things are there already. Amen? God said already, amen, he did everything, it's existed, and he is rested. And he said, it's his glory to hide it, but it's your, your glory to discover it. The, the Wright brothers, we know it, aerodynamics, the principle was there. They just look until they find it. So what you're trying to do is locate some of these principles. I don't know what you're trying to begin in your life. I don't know if it's a family, I don't know if it's a church, I don't know if it's a ministry. Uh, but I know there are certain things you're going to need to learn. And God has inherited put them there already. In the beginning of anything, you're going to need to learn the principle of support. When you're trying to build a house, you're trying to build a family, you will need support. One of the first thing any expert building when they before they go and waste their time throwing up any structure, does it have good support in what? Structure. I don't care what you're building. Do you have a good supporting base? You can have all any kind of imagination and plan to do anything. But the Lord, I would love the way the Lord Jesus he got, you can build it on sand, he said, but because it doesn't have a good sand is always shifting and moving. He said, because it doesn't have a good supporting base. He said, the first wind, storm, or water coming, what are we going to do? And what's missing there is the principle of support. But he said, if you build it on a rock, now it has something solid. So your first principle, I don't care what you're building, you have to look for the element of support. Do I have good support structure around me? Whether it's the ground, whether it's people, whether it's thing, whether it's God, I need good supporting element to begin anything, unless I like doing beginning upon beginning upon beginning. Another word to say, amen, does it have a way to secure the base? Or to secure my, my, the weight I'm going to put on top of it? Will it be stable? Is that different linguistic for the same thing? 
I need to have stability, I need to have security, I need to have amen, a good supported base if I'm going to put it there to begin whatsoever I want to start to begin. Now anything, you, you, once you begin it and you start something, amen, hopefully you, you don't leave it that way as Christ said, who starts a project and didn't weigh the cost and couldn't finish it then you become a laughing stock of all it. Once you start something, you should also understand the principle amen, of change or transition. How do I move it from beginning to try to get it to where I'm trying to get it? For, for it to get to point A to point B, there has to be some transition. And that comes with, with its own different element. You're going to need to learn the law of change and, or advancement. How do I advance the project? How do I complete it? How do I grow it? How do I develop it? It's one thing to start something, but then I need to learn how to grow it, how to expand it. Some people are very good at this, and I'll give you some practical ways of how some people have seen some of this has been done. Once you begin whatsoever you're starting and you have support, you have security, you have stability, now I need to understand how do I develop it? How do I, amen, how, how do I go through, how does it go through the process of change? How do I advance it? How do I grow it? What are the principles and the laws of those things? Amen? If not, you'll find again, you find even in business or people life is right for every New Year's, people always making all these brand new beginning. I'm starting over. But it can never go very far. And what's, what they're missing a lot of time is not they didn't start it well. Sometimes they didn't start it well. But they don't quite understand development. How do I develop this idea? This concept. It, it's, a, it's a concept. It's a seed. How, how do I grow it? How do I advance it? How do I expand it? Because there are different laws that when I begin it. Begin secures it and stabilize it. But now I need it to move. If it does stay there, it can't grow. I need to learn how to develop. I need to learn how to change. You see this sometimes. Developers are good at this too. Someone might start a project and then they just left it and never do anything with it. But a good developer, one who understands the principle of change or advancement, they can see now how to take it to the next level. How to take it to the next level. I'll give you another practical day in, work, in our world. There's, there's groups of people that call marketing expert. And you might start a business, you might have a mom and pop business, but you can't expand it. And they'll come and they'll go, they know how to market it, they know how to take this business now and make it exposed that other people can know about it, and other people can come to in view it. So they're an expert of marketing strategy, amen, how to transition it from the foundation to what? Make it known, making it exposed. They know how to advance it, how to open it. And they make a, t a fortune because they're very good at taking unknown things and making them what? No. no. We call them marketing or marketers. Amen? Or promoters. They can take an unknown fighter and what? Make him become very, very known. Like everybody in the world know about it. And, and they're very good at these principles. Promoters transition. Yes. They are very good at taking this thing and transitioning it to where it can become useful. It has its own laws and principle. Amen? And then, the, so as I, I call this process cycle, the, 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 the process of beginning, the process of transition. Amen? And finally, just like God, after God had finished all the work, He rests. The process of completion. The process of resting, <coughs> fulfillment, <coughs> satisfaction, accomplishment. <coughs> Sometimes we see this happen to someone who starts something, it was transition or, or develop. But then when it comes to completion, they'll take down their own completion. And what's happening, you've you got to know when you finish something, what we call celebrate your success. How to, how to let it rest and enjoy the fruits of your labor. But sometimes immediately, they just start the whole process over by. And wipe out the very thing that they built and transition. And what's happened, they haven't got to the place to understand when something comes, this is the time now where it should rest. This is what, based on the foundation I have set up and the transition, this is how far this can go. If I try to go farther, I'll break the foundation. If I try to go farther, I'll ruin the transitionary process. So you have to get to the principle, you know, whether it's a plane, this is how high this can go. This is where this complete base. Remember, completion is always based on what? The foundation. Foundation dictates how much weight, how much stress, amen, how far it can go. Always remember this. The principle of how far something can go is dictated by what? The foundation. The potential. Yes. The foundation shows you the potential, how much weight will go on this particular area. 
Amen. amen. <coughs> so you have to understand the principle when you come to it. Okay, I have fulfilled, amen, the requirement or the height of this thing based on the foundation. Based on the foundation. Based on the amount of money I start to support, this is as high I can go. If I try to go further, I will lose my backing or my stakeholders because I'm trying to go now beyond where this thing should have gone. You need to understand this process. Um, <clears throat> there's a couple of um, quotes I want to share with you too in, the, in this process that I thought um, I found it very beneficial and I want to share them with you in regard of this cycle, the cycle of beginning, the cycle of change, and the cycle of um, completion. There's a couple of things that, I, that, that I, 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 th I thought was very, very uh, good. Even though some of them are decades old, I still found they, they were very beneficial, at least to me, and I will try to share them with you. A second, if we can find them. share a couple of it was the first one. When we're dealing with cycles, as I said, it's important to understand the full cycle. The cycle of all things are beginning, which always, or anything you need to begin, the number one thing you need to look for, what's my supporting system? What do I have to support this beginning as, or if not as the Lord said, you will start something but you can't finish it because you did not check. You have the support to do such a thing. Amen. You're going to need a way to transition it if you want it to grow. If you want it to get exposed and you want it to become something significant, you need to understand how to develop something. Starting something, that's just one part. You need to develop that idea. That's just the beginning. That's just the beginning. And then, as I said, based on the start, what's the potential of this thing? How far can it go before I have to rest it, before I, I realize it has run the full course? Um, the British statement from the um, 1800, Benjamin Disraeli, have a statement that I find speak to us in this era. It's been a long time, over a century. And he said, he said you have a statement that I, that I found very <laughs> beneficial. He said this. The most dangerous strategy is to jump a chasm in two leaps. He said the most dangerous strategy, can we just come up with this idea, is I'm going to cross a big space, a chasm, <laughs> in two leaps. This is Benjamin Israeli? Yes. Yeah. In two leaps, I'm going to do it. You see, to cross a chasm, I need to consider minimum three components. Where am I? The space, and where am I going to walk? Land! Do what, if you understand anything but aerodynamics or plane, for a plane that is so heavy to take off, I must consider what? To, just, just to take off first. I have to consider what? Do I have enough what? Runway. Because the plane has to pick up a certain amount of speed before it can what? Take off. Based on the weight and the weight, the makeup of the plane, it must pick up a certain amount of speed so it need enough for a runway to do this, it's, it's, it's a massive plane, before it can what? Take off. But is that enough if you know anything about flying? Does a plane have to sustain a certain amount of speed or, or if not it starts dropping when it's flying? Yep. Yep. Absolutely! It has to be traveling a certain amount of speed, I think it's almost 500 something miles per hour. If not, it immediately gravity starts to what? Yeah. Pulls it down. If it's not traveling, it must take this into consideration. How, what speed do I have to get up to? Which means how much runway do I need? If not, I can't get off. And then after I get off in the ground, it must be traveling at a certain speed. If not, immediately gravity can start what? Pulling it down. It starts pulling it down. But that's only two dimensions it's considering so far. To descent. Does it need to be at a certain height before it hit the, the, the runway? And does it need a certain amount of driveway, runway, before it can stop? Yes, it does. Equally, like how it needs a certain amount of runway to pick up speed, it needs a certain amount of runway to slow it up, down. 
This is where you start when you travel and get ready to descend. It needs to come to a certain height, and it needs a certain amount of runway for the plane. It just doesn't hit the ground and stop. So it must consider minimum three components, three dimensions. My start, my transition, the path I'm going to travel in between, the height, etc. And how much space do I need to land based on what speed I'm coming in with? <coughs> Amen. How much speed do I need to land? As, as I was reading this, I go, how true it is. In whatsoever you're undertaking, minimum you need to consider three components. My beginning, my transition or development, and my what? Ending. Where does this thing finish? Where do I end? What does my touchdown look like? What is my trajectory going to look like? And where do I begin to attain? Because remember, my trajectory dictates by where I'm starting. Do you understand this? And my end going to dictate by where my trajectory was. Can you see this? So where I begin will dictate how I can get to. And where, based on where I get to, that will dictate where I'm going to what? Land. I need to consider three dimensions or three components minimum to be affected. So Benjamin Disraeli said, the most dangerous is only to consider what? Two options. Because you have decided, okay, I can start and I can transition, but you never take into consideration where you're going to what? End. This happens ever so often. I'll give you a practical example. I've talked to a few people or I've met some people. They have great passion in starting something. And they have got the right people around them and the marketers and the support and they were able to develop a transition advancing. But they never considered the end. And then they got to an end, but it wasn't the end they thought they were going to get to. This is when they become depressed sometimes, they hurt themselves. Because where they end, if not what they thought would have happened over the company or the business or all that, they never consider the third dimension. That if I'm starting it and I'm transitioning, it will end what? Somewhere. You ever as a kid, you throw something and that's having fun and you never consider where that thing on the hand and it ends up hitting somebody or hurting somebody? Mm -hmm. I was just considering starting it and throwing it. I never consider what? The end result. Where does this thing on the end? How does it finish? And it becomes dangerous if I'm beginning something and worse, developing it, and don't consider what? The end of it. You must consider the end. You must take three dimensions into consideration. When you to, to complete what I call the full cycle, the start, the transition, amen, and the end, all three. If not, as Benjamin is really, I become dangerous. Many of us have great intention, things we want to do, but we end up doing some crazy thing because we don't consider the whole picture. And if you it's for the, for the church, if you can't see it as all through the process, you should be asking God's grace that you can see it. Get the support you need to transition just like you had in the beginning and know what's necessary to bring it to completion. Amen? In the name of Jesus. I want to share something else from you. There, in the late 1800s to the beginning of the 1900s, there was an American author named William Catter. And um, the, the there's a wonderful statement that I like um, um, for, um, from, from, from this author, and it goes, um, we're going to talk about this too. There are some things you learn best in a calm state, when things are nice and calm, the environment in you are nice and calm. It's so you're able to learn. And there are some, <coughs> amen, and some in storms. So there are some things you can only learn with nobody or nothing bothering you because you need to focus <laughs> when things are nice and calm. But there are some things you only can learn during the storm. You need to learn, is this is part of the full cycle why you got to go through the full, and all of this speak to endurance. Endurance is necessary, you understand, for me to learn the full cycle. There are some things I will learn when I'm nice and calm because, as I say, I can focus, I can observe the information. But there's certain things no amount of calm can help you to learn and I need to be in the storm. I need to see in the storm how I respond when the pressure is on. When it, when I, how I respond when I'm knocked off my mark. 
how I respond when I suffer a defeat. There are some lessons can only be learned in stores. And believe me, God is the master trainer. He puts the put you through the full gamut. God will teach you in nice and calm, but he will teach you like the disciples in the storm. Jesus sleeping downstairs. He goes, there are some things you've got to learn in storms. Storm bring an element that calm doesn't want. Bring. And there's some things you can't learn in storm. You're, you're, you're hanging off for your dear life. You're so trying to survive, you're not learning anything. But both is what? Necessary. Both is absolutely necessary for you to get to maturity. There's a time, Salomon said, there's a time and a season for everything. There's a time to relax and enjoy learning certain things. I was talking to one of my brothers early this morning. A, little, a few years ago, we were reading like they were crazy. We read like we read a gentleman brother watch me work. You, you wrote either two books, we read it all. And in a short time. <laughs> but we were going, we we're so busy <coughs> these days, there's no time to read. There are some seasons, it's nice and calm, and you will learn in that season. But there's some lesson can only be learned because you're in the fight. You understand? This? I play golf. There are certain things I can learn when nobody bought me. I'm in my own zone on the range. But there's certain things I can only learn when I'm playing the game. The variation, the different, the highs, the lows, the slopes. The range doesn't give me that unless I can really use my imagination to create the storm. Do you understand? There's something a fighter has to learn in our world, we call it the theory. But then, and you need to learn the theory. But you have to enter the storm of the fight. To learn what? The subtlety that the theory couldn't show you. God is wonderful and thorough. God will put you through a season where things are nice and calm and you're, you're learning wonderfully. But you'll find, just like Daniel or like he told Jeremiah, he got, you fight with man and they wear you out. How are you going to fight with lion in the ticket? He got, you have to fight with lions too. And he got in, in a place where it's not easy. Yes, you have to enter the storms. When you catch this principle, amen, you will find you will start to learn and advance rapidly in both. In the calm season, you won't be idle, you'll maximize that opportunity. But in the storm, you start to learn as a, how to take small space because the wave is so big. You don't have time to do this big movement. And how to deal things with limited amount of time. And how to produce and react effectively and profitably under pressure. You don't have to be calculated, quantify it. Both is necessary to learn, to develop. Job was learning in his nice, beautiful season and time with his family. But he also had to be learned when? In the storm of his life. Something you'll barely make it up. It's not the storm. That was not where the lesson. The lesson did you learn, did you develop. It's not you're nice and calm, nothing, your life is so beautiful, nothing. The question, are you learning? Are you developing? Are you growing? I thought that was very, very um, beneficial to, and, and for us to echo. Very, very, well very echo. He's the God of the hills and valleys. Yeah, yeah. both. Yeah. He's God in the storm and God in the calm. We know this. The Bible teaches us Solomon. Solomon prayed to God and asked for wisdom, and God granted him wisdom. He became the wisest man. Wisdom is, is God and come from God, etc. Amen. We know the earlier church and many of us, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you get tremendous wisdom. You get a, in fact, you get a wisdom of God. He gives you his very wisdom, not a kind of wisdom, his wisdom. You get this. But the Bible also teaches in Proverbs, the Bible says, it's God's glory to hide a thing. And it's your glory, the laws and the principle of the one. Find it. God says there already. I want you to find it. Is that the right brothers are able to find your dynamics? The cycles are there. I like um, Marcel Sprouse, the French novelist, said this. We don't receive wisdom. We must discover it for ourselves. After a journey that no one can take for us or spare us. It is true as the church, God bestows wisdom upon us. It is true. It, he does. We say it again and again through the Holy Spirit. He does. 
but there are many laws and principles he already have here. And he will, let, through the Holy Spirit, lead you to discover them. It's through this calm and storm, you must discover the principles of these things and situations. That's something he'll tell you. Based on what time it is, and actually, this one totally deals on his side. Based on what he need done at what time, you go, okay, I'm not putting you through, I'm educating you here. You go, this is what's going on, First Lady. This is, and he'll tell it to you. But there's times, he leads you into it for you to discover what? The principles of it. The principles of it. It's there. It's there. I find it on both ways. Sometimes it's just shown to me. And sometimes it's the, 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 the interfacing with the thing or the person. I'm like, it was always there. How could I overlook it for so long? God gives you wisdom to discover. Amen? And sometimes you just bestow. You must be open to both ways. Both. The wisdom to discover it and to receive it. In Jesus' name. I want to share two more with you. Can you just read that quote again, Marcel Proust? We, we don't, don't receive wisdom, we must discover it for ourselves. After a journey that no one can take for us or spare us. If you're in the world, this is absolutely right, but the church has another option. We do get wisdom from God, the church. Understand this. For the world, this is absolutely. But this is not our fate alone. We do. God doesn't call the world can discover. We, the church, can discover. The laws and principles are there. <clears throat> but we also receive what? The Holy Spirit. Right. Which means we receive the endowment to of wisdom. Any man or woman of God who received the Holy Spirit knows this. Perfect. Wisdom can be in the form of experience. Yes, of course. And sometimes that's the best wisdom. Yes. Because we don't like to listen to knowledge. It's too theoretical. We're like, yeah, 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 in one ear, out the other. Absolutely. But once you've been put to the fire, <laughs> the stars, my brother. <laughs> you're like, I don't have to remember that. Yeah, yeah. I know it. It's, it's, it's rot in. It's rot in. It's rot in. Yeah. Many of us are like that. God tell you? Ah, we see it again and again. God tell Israel, don't do this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm going to put you in Babylon for a while. I'm going to... And it, it gets rotten. Yeah. Rotten. Oh, you don't forget. <laughs> you can't forget. <laughs> uh, the, the, in ancient time, they used to be, there's the, a the saying, they go out, oh, you must stitch it into the flesh. Like, you wound it in. Wound. Let me share two more with you before I wrap this process up. I want to share the process of change. We talk about the cycle of change. There must be a beginning, there must be a transition, and there must be a completion or an end. I want to talk a little bit more about that. I want to talk about the two more I want to share with you. I want to share the, the British writer, Virginia Woolf. For the church, it's a little different, but the principle remains the same. Amen? She said, a self that goes on changing is a self that goes on living. So she said, a person that goes on changing is a person that goes on living. If year after year, and this goes into the church, in the church, the Lord says you must change from what? One degree of glory to another. You should consistently be changing to keep advancing or to say you're living. Anything not changing becomes stagnated. It is what? Dead. Even, in, even things in death is decaying consistently. You should consistently go on changing if you said you're living. Do you understand? I'm never the same from day to day. And I'm not even talking about your cells are changing. Do you know every day millions of cells die and millions regenerated? But I'm not even talking. I'm talking strictly here the soul. The only consistent is the spirit. The soul should be changing what? Moment by moment. The vastness and the range of God and the range of the Spirit. God said, I'll give you a spirit of power. And I'll give you a spirit, amen, of self-control. Amen? And love. He said, I'll give you a spirit, amen, of love, power, and self-control. So you should consistently be discovering more love, more power, more control. Every day. In fact, it should become second. As you pass through this calm moment and storm, you should be discovering deeper level of motivating love. Deeper level of power, how to deal with things, and deeper level of self what? control. If this is not happening, as Virginia Woolf said, 
You are now living. Because some of us are quite comfortable. We were the same last year and the year before and the day before and 10 years. That is not a good thing. Even death does better than that. It decay what? Continues. It continues. And for we, the church, we should be changing from one degree of glory to another. The Bible says strength to strength, victory to victory, overcoming upon overcoming. More motivation of love, urging and impelling you deeper and richer. More position, more profitability to help mankind. That way it's almost like time running from you. You should become the hunter of time, not the other way around. Time is running up. You should be trying to maximize time to do the things you have to do. Especially when we have what we have from God. Christ is our wisdom and our power. This is why Paul said in Titus, teach our people to really understand, not to be idle, but to be extremely effective. My brothers out there, sisters out there, I'm fortunate to walk with them. My wife, I live with. And you ask them, or ask my wife, she's the closest. I'm not a man that plays with time. I'm a hard man for you to get certain things from in a sense like, well, let's just do this or do that. Because I always have to quantify this. How does this affect my one? Time. I have to be transforming and I have to be in a position to serve. How does this impact my time to do these things? The last thing I want to share with you, there were five quotes I wanted to share with you. We talk about you must keep changing, but I want to talk about how to change. How to change also. We want to keep doing it and I want to talk. Victor Hugo, the French author, leave a statement behind. Victor Hugo was born in 18, 1802 to 1800 to, 18, to 1885. And he left this statement. He said, change your opinions, amen? Keep to your principle. Follow this, this concept of an agreement. I don't want to share it to you. So I'll phrase it. I'll say it again. Change your opinions. As you grow, your opinion should what? Change. You should be getting more developed. Amen. Keep to your principle. Don't be sellout. Know what you stand for, what you stand for who you are. Amen. You want to understand? Change your beliefs. Amen. Keep intact your root. Remember, when I started this process saying your root will dictate you make a trajectory, amen? A trajectory dictate where you can land. Do you understand? You ever see a plane flying or something, how high it is? You go, I can't make another runway. I'm just too high. I only have enough fuel to get up this runway. It's dictating where it's got to go. So he said, change your opinion as you grow, you should what? Change. Paul put it this way. He said, when I was a child, I think and I reason. If you listen to me, you'll go, he's childish, I'm developed. You go, that, those are the things they think about or she think about that they talk about. You're like, Limited. But as you grow, your opinion should what? Change your perspective. You should be developing. You should start to get serious about certain things. However, keep your root, keep your principles in what? Intact. The principles you live for, you live for or by, those should stay what? Intact. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Your development, but the principle, the foundationary process. It doesn't matter which generation is right, God can rest. The principles remain what? Intact. Generation comes in, generation goes, but what? The principle of foundation beginning stays. The principle of transition stays. The principle of landing, do they change? They don't change. It's just the people are changing. The age are changing. The color is changing, ethnicity. But the principle remains what? So as we develop your limited idea and opinion, one of the things I always encourage people, if, you're, if there's one thing you get a chance to do, if God allows it, try to travel. And one, one of the reasons I want you to do this, it will change your opinions. We have a lot of preconceived notions based on our limited perspective. When you see how different people live and think and act, you're like, man, I'm truly limited in this idea. My, 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 my conclusions are so limited. It opens your horizon. So he said, Victor Hugo said, Change your opinion. Keep your principle. Change your leaf, the outside. Keep your root intact. Leaf comes, they change, they go. They fall, they come back up in the spring. But the root remains what? 
intact. Your principles and your root must always stay. Your root always dictates your trajectory, as I said. Your principle amen, is the one you, you use during the beginning or the, uh, during the transition. Amen. It's what stops you from falling for all kinds of stuff and during the end. Do you understand? This you don't change. People that are begin something and then they, they betray it in, 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 in Romans, God, God said, he put it this way. Amen. He said, anything you do without faith, that is sin. You see, those principles, what you stand for us to stay in the beginning, in the transition, and in the end, your root don't change. Your root stay intact, and your principle, why for the church, our principle is love. Our love for God, I don't care if it's in the beginning, I don't care if it's in the transition, it must remain what? Intact. The motivating reason for us being and doing should always what? Be. I don't care if you're in the transition, I don't care if you're descending to land, the principle remain what? The same. Wanted to be profitable, you know, I wanted to honor God and be profitable. I don't care where we are, that principle should never what? Change. We go to different place, different people, different things, but the principle should remain what? I, I, there's one of my sister, many years ago, I haven't seen her in a bit, she, she goes to me, she goes, I'm convinced, no matter where I drop, if God was to take you right now and drop you in Vietnam, you will still be serving people. The principle doesn't what? Change. She's right. All my life I've been doing it. When I was ignorant, I'm doing it. When I start to become enlightened, it just doesn't change. The principle must remain. But to do that also, the root that it's built up needs to stay intact. In the church, amen, our root is love. To honor God. You know, my brothers and sisters that walk with me, even my, not so, even my, my wife and my children notice. When I was to pass, they go over there, they laugh them, what kind of funeral do you want to laugh neither here or there? I want you to put this on the stone though. He lived for the glory of God. He lived for serving humanity and to live his highest life. He didn't want to operate below his potential. For the glory of God, for the service of humanity, amen, and to live to his full potential, his highest life. Very simple. Every day, this, no matter where I go, what time it is, the principle is to do this. You must glorify God. Help as many people. And do not underperform. I don't want I could be a 10 and I'm playing at a 2. That's not good enough for me. Or a 3 or a 4 or a 6. If I could be at a 10, through the grace of God that came down from heaven, I want to be what? 10. In the storm and in the calm. You see, whether it's a calm season or a stormy season, I want to operate at a 10, if that's my potential. Hallelujah. I have never believed and support the process of playing small, like if that's helping anybody. The enemy would like man to do that, but we the church should not participate in such a thing. I leave you with this as I close this process. In Matthew 16, Verse 19, the Lord Jesus said, The keys of heaven I give to you. He said, Whatsoever you loose must be what loose in heaven, and whatsoever you seal must be what loose. The church has the ability to close things and to what? Open things. It's even better. He, he, he goes, he goes, And the gates of Hades, of, he said, Those of the infernal region, region around the, the resistance, he goes, they will not able to withstand you as you're trying to open it. He said two things. He said they will not be able to overcome you or withstand what you are trying to do to your detriment. Do you understand? He said the gates of amen, of Hades, those of the infernal region, they will not be able to overcome you. That's one part. But they, when you try to open a gate and they try to block it, they will not be able to withstand it to your detriment. Do you understand? He doesn't they can't wear you up. He, did say not, he never said they're not going to resist you. He said they're going to resist, but they can't overcome. And he said they can't hold out to your detriment. So there, there's no if they'll resist. Because sometimes we do is we start something, but soon as we feel some resistance, we detour. And what we are forgetting, one, we have the key, and they can't hold out to our detriment. It is we who can hold out to our, their detriment. If I keep pressing, they will break down. One, they can't overcome. First lady, can you pull that up for me in the... Um, MLT, please. Matthew 16, 19. Matthew 
1619 says in the NLT, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven, and whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. Amen. Read the next verse, please. Then... Actually, sorry. Read the verse before. Now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock. And upon this rock, I will build my church, and Amen. all the powers of hell will not conquer it. Amen. They can't conquer it. In the Amplified, it, it cannot hold out to your detriment. It got, this, this power I give you of heaven, these keys still on the, operate in this realm. They cannot overcome you, and they can't hold out against you. You see, the enemy is counting. You lack the understanding that when he resists you a bit, you, you, you back off. You've got to be quite clear and realize he cannot resist me to my detriment. To the Spirit of God. And He cannot overcome. So when you wage war, you can wage war effectively in the storm and in the calm. And you can start crossing some of these chasm in our life that is necessary. Remember, you will need faith to create the bridge that is necessary when it's not there. Amen? You will need love as the motivating factor. And you will need to endure to learn the things that are necessary. There are lessons some of us are failing to learn because you won't endure the calm season. You're always looking for a storm because you might have come through one. That's the only way you know to live. And some of us, we don't want to face no storm. We think we are not in the, in the four realms or time. We think we should have no resistance though the Lord said. They'll resist, but they can't overcome. So soon as some storm, we're running, we're bailing, not realizing there's a tremendous lesson to be learned in the storm. There are lessons to be learned. There's some of us, vice versa, we, you, you know, we take a Solomon position, I'm just waiting for God to give me wisdom, and God is going, I give you power to go and locate it. Locate it. Locate it. He said, I want you to locate the thing you're looking for. It's there. Search it out. Christ says, seek and what? Keep on doing it. He said, knock and keep what? Knock. You see? Some of it you have to seek out, you have to knock, you have to wrestle out to accomplish the process. In conclusion, all of these three areas need to be sung. You must be sung in your love. Or excellent, call it what you wish. You must be sung in faith. I want you to understand why. To believe in God. Amen. The Bible says you must believe God exists and He reward those that believe. You need to have faith to believe in the invisible God. You need to have faith to create like God. And you need to endure that you can become sound or mature in the process. Love will take a little while for you to become familiar with it enough. So will faith. And you're not going to be able for the church, we're not going to be able to bypass. You trust me, I've tried this. Sometimes I used to do this because I don't want to use faith out of God. If you just grant me enough resource, then I'll just, um, you know, I'll be fine. You go, oh, you're trying to bypass faith, I see. You're trying to negotiate with me so I don't have to use what? Faith. I got a, I got a, 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 a truth to tell you. In the kingdom currency, faith is a billion times more in weight than what? Resource. Of course. They're not even in the same... Quantification. Please understand this process. You understand? One is considered like rubbish and the other one is considered like the most separate. Faith is that one. God does not let us substitute our faith with resource. It doesn't work. You have to have, because remember, you're made, he want, as Jesus said, you will do greater things than I have done. Jesus, as you know, his mommy came to a party they have no wine. Did his mom know he's God's son and what he can do? She goes, can you create some? You have to be able to do this. You have to be able to use your faith to bring things that doesn't exist into what? Existence. We have to work with it. Things that doesn't exist into existence. God does not let you get away with that. You're not going to be able to use resource to do that. <laughs> it already exists. <laughs> I am trusting the word today benefit you. I am trusting, especially the church, as Paul tell Titus, he said, tell our people, tell our people. They have to be sung in this area. 
They must not waste time. They must learn to become effective. We are here for a short time. I don't know if it's 20 years, 50 years. I don't know what, uh, what your time God allow, allotted to you. But that's controlled strictly on this side. But this much I know, you can't waste time. You have to be effective within the time. You must grow and come to your full height in love, equally in faith, and you must endure the process that you become strong or proficient in it within the time. We want to get it done. No, we, we're not going to follow the other system like the Roman Catholic Church when I get a purgatory. No, no, now, or when I get to heaven. No, you should be proficient before you get to heaven. As Paul said, God has made me an expert builder. You have to become an expert builder now. The people that need it is the people right now on this earth. God's glory it needed to be have right now in your life, in your family life, in your time, in your job, wherever you are. I'm going to come into church again afresh into God's hands. Let, let me pray because I close this process. I want to worship a little bit first. Just a minute or two. He is Lord. For he is Lord, he is risen from the dead, and he is Lord. Every knee, every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for your inspiration. We thank you for your hand extended to your creation, laying hold of all of us by our right hand, leading us by counsel, bringing us into honor and glory. We thank you for making our love sound and for making our way of faith sound and the process of endurance sound that we can get to that height and stature of Jesus by which we all shall be measured. Today I thank you for extending your grace that came down from heaven to the young church. Deliver them from sin. Move them into the eternities of eternity. Grant them the power to resist the temptation and the religion and all the fruitless way of this world. Grant them the grace to claim, to rely, to depend on Jesus so they keep overcoming this world and the evil one God. Thank you Lord for extending to all humanity, especially your church, grace heaped up upon grace. And favor eat up upon favor, and blessing and protection eat up upon blessing. We also thank you that you give us the keys to open and seal in accordance with heaven, Father, and that the gates of the infernal region cannot overcome us or hold out to our detriment. I commit all of us and all you have done afresh into your hands in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.